how do you get an old Jeep engine running that's been sitting for years, won't turn over, and is missing a bunch of parts? In today's video, we're gonna work on just that. I recently picked up this industrial L134. I got it cheap. It's in unknown condition. It's missing a bunch of parts. Um, I put a wrench on the crank pulley when I was looking at it and we couldn't get it to spin. So it might be totally junk or it might just need a little attention. In the Willys world, it's super common to get engines in this condition. Um, it's kind of a hit or miss, but if it's cheap enough and close enough, it's worth grabbing. Even if it won't run, there's still lots of usable parts on this engine. And while there are differences between an uh, industrial engine like this and one that you'd find in a Jeep, the procedure is going to be exactly the same and that wouldn't really affect you uh, trying to get a Jeep engine running versus this uh, pump or generator, welder, engine, things like that. Let's dig in. So let's say you found an engine on Marketplace or you're going to your buddy's house. What do you look for? Um, first thing I notice is the environment. Was the engine outside? Was it in a shop? Does it look um, like it was at the bottom of the ocean? Uh, things like that. Uh, carburetor, does it have one? And is anything over it? When I got this one, there was a Ziploc bag over the carburetor. The bag had water in it, but it wasn't, didn't appear to be dripping down in too bad. Um, also, spark plugs, are they in place? Are they snapped off? Are the, you know, these little holes full of water? Just kind of the overall condition of the engine and how it was stored. Um, how someone cares for something will tell you a lot about uh, the condition. I have some engines that sit out in the field because I know they're junk and I don't care about them versus uh, the ones I have over here in the corner that I plan to use someday. So I take a lot better care of them. All right, so we verify that it's not full of water. You know, I had the carburetor covered. Now what parts is it missing? You know, does it have an oil filter? Does it have a carburetor, distributor, coil? generator this one is missing the starter those are all key components that you'll either have to source or it could tell you that the engine has been cannibalized for parts because it wasn't really worth getting running um, or it might mean nothing at all i'm just telling you things i look for when i'm buying a jeep so if you notice starters missing distributor cap and rotor are missing um, so it's just things to to keep an eye out for the only real common area i've seen for cracks that you can just tell by looking at it um, are the water jackets on the heads sometimes you'll see them cracking um, kind of where they meet the block or up here uh, look for snapped off bolts and things like that also crack on the block right below the distributor this one has a tag for the industrial engine right there, so I can't see that area. But a lot of times you'll see sediment or rust coming out of there. Doesn't mean the engine's completely worthless, but it's something to consider and it might be able to help you haggle on price. All right, let's say it passed visual inspection, you're ready to haggle. Um, next thing you might wanna do, if you're still interested, obviously, is pull the dipstick. This is a little stubby dipstick because it is an industrial engine. So I haven't done anything to this engine yet and I can tell it has oil in it. It's black, but it doesn't appear to have too much water in it. It may be a tiny bit milky. If this engine had water in it, this would look more um, kind of like chocolate milk. It would have, uh, or just totally white. If it's completely full of water, it might be white. I might have nothing on the end. You're really not gonna tell if it has like metal chunks or anything. Um, give it a smell. It smells like old gas to me. So this oil doesn't scare me one bit. The level was good and it doesn't have water in it. So that's a really good sign to me. Also, the dipstick and the cap don't appear to have a ton of rust. Sometimes you pull these out and they're rusty all the way up. That means a lot of moisture, things like that. So the oil test on this engine passed in my book. I mentioned spark plugs already. Um, does it have spark plugs in it? Are any snapped off? How old do they look? Doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot because someone could have changed the plugs or taken them out. Whenever I go look at an engine, I take a 13 16 spark plug wrench and I ask if they mind if I pull the plugs. If they do mind, that's a red flag. Unless it's really cheap, I would just leave. But most people won't care one bit. Um, you can tell these, I have already sprayed oil in here, so it's kind of hard to tell but let's show you some plugs. If the spark plug is completely rust 
Um, not so much worried about the thread area or the top, but in here where the electrode is, if that's all rusty, also take a flashlight, look down in the hole. It should be um, brown or black carbon. I wouldn't worry too much if there's like oil residue, like real black and wet looking. That's not terrible, but rust is the enemy and definitely water. Um, this is a, a healthy spark plug out of a running engine I have. It's more of a tan with a little black residue. That's a really good sign, um, but just take a look. Also, sometimes you'll see uh, damage to these because there's something actually in there. I don't notice that so much with a flathead engine because of where the valves are located, but on an overhead valve engine, uh, banged up spark plugs are a really good sign to walk away. Next on the list is, will the engine turn over? So this is the crank pulley. This is the crank nut. It has a little hand start pin in there. Um, if the rings get stuck or, or anything rust solid, um, that's going to really tell you a lot about the health of the engine. So uh, it may seem kind of silly, but when I go to look at one of these, I take this big three quarter inch ratchet with an inch and three eighths socket and that fits right on the pulley. The buyer or, or the seller should not mind if you do this. If they do, that's another red flag and I would either cut the price way down or walk away. If the engine's in the vehicle, this can be challenging to get to, but it's not impossible. And if the engine's out of the vehicle, it's easy to get to, but sometimes it's hard because the whole engine wants to rock. This being an industrial engine, these legs and the mounts help a lot. Um, but get the socket on there. Looking at the engine, when they run normally, they spin clockwise. So I usually just go with that. That would be like in the uh, righty, tighty direction. So that will also prevent, if you try to go the other way, sometimes you'll just unthread the nut. When I was at this guy's house, we couldn't get this to turn over um, and he didn't know the history of it. So it was a bit of a gamble, but it was cheap. So what I'm telling you is just if it won't turn over initially, it doesn't mean the engine's junk. Um, this might be junk. I don't know. But for the price, it was worth it. Um, but just don't be terribly discouraged, but definitely, um, you know, base your price on that because if it doesn't turn over, it could just be lightly stuck from sitting or uh, the pistons could all have a huge ring of rust around them. It could have broken rings, um, many number of things. So look at it as uh, what would you pay for the parts on that engine, not assuming that it'll be a good running engine. I didn't get it on film, but when I brought this engine home, I pulled all the spark plugs out and I filled each uh, spark plug hole with automatic transmission fluid and I let it sit for about 48 hours. Then I came back out with my bar. That's probably the hardest thing is to have patience and let it soak a little bit. This being a flathead valve engine, if you can lean it that way towards what would be the passenger side, it will help the oil travel into the cylinders and not just go down the valves and out the exhaust or in the intake. But you need to get some sort of lubricant down in there, uh, diesel fuel, something thin. I like automatic transmission fluid. Uh, let it sit and then try to break it free. So after 48 hours, I came out here and I had to use my foot. I didn't kick the bar, but I put some body weight into it and it, it spun over. Um, I could go about half a turn and then it would get tight. So then I would flip the ratchet and go back the other way. And I just went back and forth like that until it started to feel free. I can hear some exhaust and some compression happening right there. And then it wasn't too long at all and then I could actually feel the compression strokes. And so this is a huge win in my book. This tells me that um, the rings aren't completely stuck and the valve train is moving. I can feel multiple individual compression strokes. So very good sign. Um, but the key there is go a little bit this way, a little bit that way. And if you hit something really hard, it hits a wall, don't pound through it go back the other way. You might have to let it sit a few more days. Um, just have patience. And uh, if it starts to move, that's a good sign. I looked out on this engine that it easily started to spin. So I have pretty high hopes we will be able to get this running. Um, if it won't spin with the bar and a little bit of oil and time, the next step would be to pull the head and actually look down in the cylinders uh, and see if that's the problem. I've had them be completely full of rust and water. I've also had broken rods that were jammed into the block and that's why it wouldn't turn. So without um, you know, maybe pulling off the oil pan or the head, you really can't tell. But in most cases, a little bit of oil, a breaker bar and some time and you'll get things freed up.